Today was a weird day. It was another long day at the office. Piles of paperwork stood a mile high on my desk, and it had taken hours to even make a dent in it. I couldn't have been more relieved when the clock finally hit 5 p.m. I hightailed it out of there and went on my way. I pulled into the driveway, and I couldn't help but admire what stood before me. A gorgeous two-story home layered with the highest quality brick, a 500-square-foot red cedar deck out in the back, the luxurious pool below it, and a hot tub to boot. The perfectly symmetrical yard with lush green grass and a massive wine cellar in the basement. My wife and I had slaved away working multiple jobs each to save up for this place. Seeing the response to our offer had brought tears to our eyes. This was our dream home. As I sat in the driveway, someone pulled up right beside me. I turned my head to see what was going on. There was a man in the car. He couldn't have been more than 40. His hair was receding, and he had thin eyes. He looked like he was tall, likely well over six feet, and he was pale. He was also creepily thin, and he was staring at me. The discomfort I felt was instant. You know how there are some people that you just look at and they immediately give you the heebie-jeebies? That was this guy. I pulled forward a little, and he did the same. I went a little further, and so did he. That didn't work. I decided I would play it cool now. I turned to him, smiling, and waved. The blank expression on his face didn't flinch. I don't even think he blinked. I quickly turned my head away from him and started looking forward again. It didn't matter. I could still feel his gaze. I think you all know that paranoid feeling of being watched. Well, I was being watched, and that paranoid feeling had increased tenfold. I quickly hit the lock button on my car, just in case he tried to do something. Okay, maybe if I waited it out, he'd leave me alone. I kept my vision straight ahead and waited. 30 seconds passed, then a minute, then two. Two turned to four. His car hadn't moved. He hadn't left. Sweat began to trickle down my brow. If he was messing with me, he's doing a really good job. I'm freaked the hell out. Was he going to try to hurt me? This wasn't working. I pretended I had just gotten a phone call and picked it up. I mocked having a conversation, and I made exaggerated movements to seem like I had forgotten all about him. I wanted him to believe that I was on an important call, all the while nervously looking into my periphery the entire time. He was still there. Okay, now what? I racked my brain for an answer. Maybe, just maybe, he was as uncomfortable as I was. Maybe he had the same idea as me, and was pretending to take a call now or something. Despite every instinct I had begging me not to, I turned my head and looked back in his direction. He was still staring at me, and actually felt more like he was staring through me, like he was peering right into my soul. I could feel the goosebumps across my body in mass. Those eyes of his just wouldn't look away. I didn't know what to do. Should I honk? Should I give him the finger? Should I threaten him? What if he was armed? Before I could do anything, I saw him reach for the door handle. Our eyes narrowed in on each other. He slowly opened the driver's door about an inch. He unbuckled his seatbelt. All the while, our eye contact did not break. He methodically began to exit his vehicle. He was going to come for me. I knew it. This has gone on for way too long to be a joke. He was going to try to hurt me. My breathing became more erratic. My body had begun trembling. I could feel the sweat course down my body and my wet palms tightened around my keys. If he makes a move, I'll have to strike with these. Our eyes still hadn't broken contact and then his door was wide open now. But instead of coming for me, he made a mad dash towards the door inside the garage that led into the house. No, no, you don't. 
instinct completely took over, and before I knew what was happening, I had unlocked my car door and beelined towards the garage. He had a head start, but I was in better shape, and I started to catch up quickly. He beat me to the door and tried to slam it on me, but I was able to get there in the nick of time and stop it from completely closing. I don't know what this guy's intentions for me were, but they weren't good. We fought hard to win the battle for the door. He tried with all his might to keep me out, and I did the same thing to keep that from happening. Suddenly, all the resistance I had felt was gone and I fell forward, toppling into the floor inside the house. When I lifted my head, the man was gone. Where did he go? I quickly got up and slowly moved forward. I didn't see him anywhere. It was too late to turn back now. Luckily, I knew every inch of this house like the back of my hand. There was only a few spots that he could be. I ventured further into the house and reached the edge of the kitchen, my eyes quickly surveying my surroundings and my head on a swivel. I saw the knife rack over by the sink. There were two empty slots. Thankfully, it wasn't empty, though. I tiptoed my way over, each step perfectly soundless. I heard the creak of the door and quickly turned. The man rushed out at me from the pantry and swung his knives at me wildly. Who the hell are you? I was able to dodge the first swing. I nearly dodged the second, but it grazed me, creating what I imagined looked like a slanted line of blood right across my face. I bolted towards the living room, and he followed me in pursuit. I looked around for anything else I could use to protect myself. There was the fireplace, and the fire was burning. Perfect. I'd grab the fire poker. Where are they? A massive amount of force struck me in the back of the head, and I toppled over in front of the fireplace. I quickly shifted from back to front to see my assailant. He swung the knife down hard with his right hand. I narrowly avoided the blade, and it launched into the wooden floor next to me. But I wasn't so lucky the second time. The blade plunged through my right hand, and I screamed in agony. Tears immediately burst out of my eyes, and my vision went blurry. I'd never felt such pain in my entire life. But I needed to try to remain calm. While my hand was now punctured with the knife, that also meant he was out of weapons. That was when I was met with a blunt force to the side of my head. The water in my eyes had already made it difficult to see. Now, things had gotten fuzzy, and I was seeing stars too. The man bent over me and struck me over and over. I knew somewhere my face had been busted open because I felt the warm trickle of blood flow from my temple down past my cheek. I was fading. I couldn't take much more of this or I'd be out, or worse. I'd pulled the only card I had left. I kicked him in the crotch and he collapsed as I yanked the knife out of my hand. I swung at him with everything I had only to miss. Somehow, he was already back on his feet. I swung again, but he was able to break my grip of it, and the knife went flying. I tackled him, and he fell back onto the brick surrounding the fireplace to the left. Pictures that had been mounted above us fell, and glass shattered everywhere. I grabbed the biggest piece I could find and pierced his leg. He let out a guttural growl. Then, with every ounce of energy I had left in my body, I forced his body to the right, right into the fire. His body struggled and contorted unnaturally as his head was burned into something beyond recognition. Finally, his motion ceased. I leaned back, exhausted. We'd made a hell of a mess. This certainly wouldn't be easy to explain. I gently grabbed one of the pictures that had fallen, brushing off the broken glass, and took a look at it. I'll give this guy credit for one thing. He has a beautiful family. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to tonight's story. Special thanks to Explicit Violence for writing this super awesome creepy story and letting me narrate it on the channel for you. I'll link the original post down below 
so you can check out his other work, as well as his Instagram. You can also follow me on social media, which I will also link down below. You can follow me there for more exclusive content, as well as send feedback of what you'd like to hear in the future. Thanks for all of your support, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Good night.